بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته رياض وجازي ويلكم يو تو ستوريز اوف ذا بروفيتس ذيس از ابيزود نمبر 15 ابيزود نمبر 15 فروم ذا ستوريز اوف ذا بروفيتس اند ان شاء الله تعالى توداي وي شود بي ايبل تو فينيش ذا ستوري اوف ابراهيم عليه السلام I think we had like four sessions just with Ibrahim السلام, and today is session number five with Ibrahim. We should be able to finish insha'Allah ta'ala. I just want to give a minute or two for more people to join insha'Allah. I've got Facebook right there and I've got Instagram right here. Jazakum Allah khair for joining. Lula Rob on Facebook and those of you, Sid Yaseen and... And Inaya, and Rika, and, and, and Zahra, Rika Zawa, all of you, Zakum Lachir for joining, Inaya Ali, I think that's what it is, Ahlan Morkain, wa alaikum assalam, and Sister Yashmin, Zoyn, and Zoya Laraib, <laughs> all of you, welcome, welcome. So we are with episode number 15, right? With the uh, story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I want to finish it today. I don't know why Instagram people are slow logging in for some reason, right? So we'll give them another minute or two, inshallah, right? And then we'll uh, carry on. The story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. As I said initially today, inshallah, we should be able to finish. I'd like to finish the story of Ibrahim, inshallah ta'ala. And maybe, maybe, depending on the atmosphere, uh, maybe I'll give away a prize today or so. Or maybe the prize giveaway should be on the weekend, like should be the last day, Friday. But I want to test your memories, inshallah. Maybe I would quiz you, right? Sudden death quiz. I used to hate those. Oh, when I used to go to school and you're so happy, you come to class and then the teacher say, sudden death quiz. Say, oh man, what do you mean quiz? What do you mean quiz? Or like in Morocco, you know, when you're, you're studying for an exam and then you know like a topic which is hot and you study that topic so much. It happened to me in baccalaureus, you know, when I was doing my final year in the baccalaureus, I was... There was this topic in um, philosophy. I studied it so much because it's hot, it's popular. And then they give you a question which like you never thought, like some other topic you never thought about. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> really? Oh, man. You hate it, man. You're not ready. Like, you know, so you prepare. This is a topic which is very popular. This is like the hot one. Now you study, you study, you memorize, you go, you're ready. And then they ask you something like on a different topic, totally different. So it may, I may sudden, sudden quiz you. <laughs> I may sudden quiz you, inshallah. All right. Okay, let's start, inshallah. Let's start because, uh, you know, people will join when they join. So let's start. Uh, yesterday, my brothers and sisters, we talked about Ibrahim alayhi salam when he had, when he, uh, after he left, uh, um, Ismail and his mother um, Hajar uh, in the midst of the desert. Then he traveled back to um, to a Palestine uh, with uh, to me, to go back to Sarah and Allah Subhanahu. Wa when he had that, you know, those guests. Remember, Ibrahim Ali Salam used to was very generous and he used to love having guests, you know, sharing his meal with him. You know, so one day these people they came, knocked at his door. Qawm uh, Munkarun. Well, who are you, Qawm al-Munkarun? Welcome, but I don't know you. But because they were his guests, he just went and he uh, had a roasted calf for them. You know, he roasted the calf for them and then uh, he brought it, put it down. Uh, but they uh, sort of like refrained from eating and then he got scared. And then he got scared when they refrained from eating. Uh, uh, so, um, they gave him the glad tidings of a ghulam, which is uh, 
uh, alim, a ghulam who has knowledge, a ghulam who is bright, uh, and his wife who heard uh, that announcement and she was very old, right? You know, uh, she says, uh, uh, She says, how can I have a baby? How can I, how can I conceive? How can I give birth? Well, I'm, a, I'm an old woman. And here's my son, my my husband, Sheikh. My husband is a Sheikh, and he's also in the uh, old man. Uh, but it was the uh, decree of the Lord of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blessed them with a boy by the name of Ishaq. In the Old Testament, they claim that Ishaq is older than Ismail. Right? This is in the Old Testament. They claim this is their you know uh, traditions or their their stories that. Ishaq is older than Ismail, but in the Quran, in the Quran and in the Ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it is actually the opposite. Ismail is older than Ishaq. You know, Allah Azza wa blessed uh, Ibrahim ﷺ with Ismail first when he went to, uh, you know, uh, with Ismail first with Hajar, and he left them both in Mecca, right, in the in the Arab uh, Peninsula there, and then he went back to. Palestine, where he had another son with his wife, uh, with his wife Sarah. And remember the lessons we learned yesterday that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all he has to say is be and it is. Regardless of what people say, regardless of what science say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could, you know, can look. And I said this yesterday, and this is gold, really gold. I said the fact that yesterday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make things happen with the means against the means and without the means right with the means husband and 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 wife without the means you know no husband no wife and against the means you know uh like well like maryam alayhi salam she had a baby with no with no father with no husband and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had adam with no father with no mother from soil against the means from earth right so Allah Azza wa Jalla make things happen. He is Subhanahu wa Taala Al Qadir, Al Qadir, Al Muqtadir. You know, He is the All Capable, the All Willing Subhanahu wa Taala. You know. So this is what we talked about yesterday, my brothers and sisters. Well, you know, Sara when she had that baby uh, by the name of Ishaq, Sara, the most beautiful woman after uh, after Ummu uh, Nahawa, alayhum salam, and uh, now, Ibrahim السلام, my brothers and sisters, uh, went back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a message again to go back to, to Mecca. Remember that dua, the dua of Ibrahim. Until today, my brothers and sisters, people are subhanAllah benefiting from the dua of Ibrahim. When he left his son, Ismail, and his wife, Hajar, in the desert, he made that dua, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, verse number 37. ربنا ربنا إني أسكنت من ذريتي بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون and Ibrahim, he made the dua, Rabbana, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, inni askantu min dhuriyati, O oh Allah, I have settled some of my dhuriyya, some of my, you know, offsprings, descendants, in wadin ghayri rizal, in a valley that has no vegetation. There's nothing that grows in it, in the desert. Rabbana liuqimu salah, O Allah, look, 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 look at this powerful dua. He says, Rabbana liuqimu salah, O Allah, let them establish the prayers. A dua of a father. The first and foremost, the dua of the father. Yes, our children sometimes can make fun of us. And sometimes they do make fun of us. You know, we always keep on asking them, did you pray? Did you pray? Did you pray? And they say, that's all you care about is asking us about salah. Well, because I want Jannah for you. Yes. Here's Ibrahim alayhi salam. Here's Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh... Where subhanallah, that dua he made after he left his family. Rabbana 
ليقيموا الصلاة let them establish the prayers and then he said فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم سبحان الله He says, brothers and sisters, has anybody from you here been to Mecca? Mecca. Has anybody here been to Mecca? Who's been to Mecca before? Shahnaz, Morkane, Jamil, Water, Color, Najwa. Has anybody been to Mecca? Umair. Who's been to Mecca before? I have a I have a message here because it relates to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here through the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. MashaAllah Fatima and Yashmin and Munazza and Zoya, Yasin, not yet talking, inshaAllah. Those of you who have not been in Mecca, inshaAllah, may Allah Azza wa Jal make it easy for them to go to Mecca, inshaAllah ta'ala. Mecca, my brothers and sisters, is a very, very uh, vibrant town, very busy. Multicultural, busy, <laughs> extremely multicultural. The people from all over the world, right? Very busy. Medina, on the other hand, is very calm, very soothing. But Mecca, very, very, um, this is how it's just busy town. So when you come to Mecca, you're so, you're longing for the Kaaba. The first thing is. You're longing for the Kaaba. You know, some of us, we live very far. You know, we take, you know, two, three, three flights just to get to Mecca, right? And then once you get to Mecca, you haven't slept for like for two hours. Uh, two hours, two days. Uh, two hours, two days. You haven't slept for two days. So you get to Mecca. As soon as you reach the the uh, the Jeddah, Jeddah airport, and then khalas, you start waking up, right? And then you take another, you know, it depends. Sometimes it could be two hours, sometimes three hours, which is a trip that takes only about uh, 45 minutes from Jeddah airport to Mecca. From Jeddah airport to Mecca, right? Uh, so sometimes with the traffic and the stops and everything, it may take two to three hours, right? So people are still tired. And right? especially I'm talking about those like you and I who live very, very far. You know, so you have two days to reach Mecca, to reach, you know, Saudi Arabia. So you haven't slept and you're tired, you know, that. So as soon as you reach Mecca, what do they take you? They take you to your hotel. They take you to your hotel. And then... Your heart is longing for the Kaaba. Although you haven't slept, you say, I want to go for Umrah. I want to go for Tawaf. I want to go for Tawaf. What do you mean Tawaf? You're dead tired. But you say, no, 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 no. I just want to go have a shower and go for Tawaf. Although you haven't slept for two days, right? Two days. I just want to go take a shower and go to the Kaaba and make Tawaf. And I don't do that with my people. With my people, I never do that. You know, this is like 15, 18 years of experience. I never do that. I tell them to rest. You know, I put them in their hotel. They take shower, they rest, they sleep. And I take them in the evening for their first Umrah. You know, I want them to focus. Because I know the excitement. I know the excitement. But subhanAllah, people long. So they, they go for Umrah. They go for the Tawaf. And, 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 and then let's say Hajj comes. And then there's this Zahma. The crowd, the people, you know, uh, it's not like Medina. No, Mecca, I mean, people are right, left, center. People giving you a hook. People sometimes giving you an elbow. People giving you, you know, here and there. People sometimes get rude with you, you know, whether in a hotel or the shops or the even for food. You know, but it's, this is how it is. It's vibrant, very vibrant. And people are from different places. So, you know, sometimes you find them, they're quite harsh, right? So you you do your Umrah. And after the Umrah comes your Hajj. You come and you do, your, you do all your rituals. It's Zahma, Zahma, two million, three million people. Zahma, Zahma. Zahma means crowd, like very, very heavy crowd in Arabic. So, and then you just say sometimes, and then you go to the hotel, and you just want to come and pray. Some people, they pray in their rooms because they say, no, no, there's too much crowd. They pray maybe outside. They don't go inside because, again, it's so crowded. And they just want to go. And then when you go back, 
He said, Khalas, I want to go back home. I want to go back home. You go back home, you go to the airport again, Jeddah airport. Jeddah airport again, you know, so crowded, so packed just to get to the airport. It's so packed. You go, you put your luggage, you know, you manage to put your luggage, a huge lineup, you know, to, to check it in. And then another lineup to check, to go back, to go inside the, 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 you know, the airplane. It's just like you go crazy, man. Says, oh, what's going with these people? Why can't they be more organized? Why can't they be more organized? They've been doing this for centuries. Why can't they be more organized? Why Zahma crowd here, crowd there? People are not lining up properly. People are this and that. I just want to go home. Take me home. You get into the plane. As soon as the plane takes off, you miss Mecca. As soon as it takes off, you miss the Kaaba, you miss Mecca. You miss it. Why do you miss it? Why do you miss it? Here's the million dollar question. Here's the million dollar question. Those of you who've come in late, oh, you missed out so much. You want to go back and watch this from the very beginning. Why do you miss it? You were you were you were sick of the crowd. You complained. You complained and complained and this and that. And then you said, "Okay, I want to go back home." As soon as they put you on that plane and the plane takes off, you miss Mecca. Layla, she's right. Layla and, and Yasin, they write the du'a of Ibrahim. The du'a of Ibrahim. Why? Because he said, رَبَّنَا الْيُقِيمُ صَفَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ My brothers and sisters, do you know what that means? You see, in Arabic, okay, here's, here's a romantic bit. He is a deep Arabic bit. This is a deep Arabic language bit. What is it? Here it is. <laughs> you know, in Arabic, a heart has many names. In English, it just says heart. The heart. The heart. Right? Heart. But in Arabic, it has so many names. It has a name called Al-Qalb. Al-Qalb means the heart. It has a name called Al-Fu'ad. Al-Fu'ad, the depth of the heart. It has uh, myriads of names. Myriads of names. Al Fuad is one of the names of the depthness of the heart. Fuadi. You are Fuadi. You may say to your loved one. You may say to your loved one. You are Fuadi. I'm teaching you halal, halal love. <laughs> Fuadi. You know, it's not like my heart, Qalbi. Qalbi is like my heart. Fuadi. Yeah. Yes, salam. Wow, 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 wow. You know, the depth of the heart, we call it Fuad. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the dua he made, فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ Oh Allah, make the depth of the heart of the people fall in love with it. Allahu Akbar. Make the depth of the heart of the people fall in love with the Kaaba, with Bayt al-Haram. With the sanct the sanctity of that place, the sanctity of that place with the with the al haram. Subhanallah. So like I said, you know, as soon as you take off, your heart longs to it. Or as soon as you take a bus and you go to Medina. As soon as you take a bus and you go to Medina, you feel like I miss Mecca. I miss Mecca. I miss the Kaaba. Naam. Subhanallah. You want to leave when you're there because of the crowd, because of the zahma, because of, you know, there's so much you know, happening. Rude people, harsh people, this and that. You just want to make tawaf peacefully. No, there is no tawaf peacefully. There is no tawaf peacefully with all due respect. You want to go do tawaf by the Kaaba, where the Kaaba is in the main sahan, in the main plaza. There's zahma there. I know <laughs> one year, uh, <laughs> one year, uh, uh, um, I remember a guy went with us. He's so short, subhanAllah. Very short man. Very short man. And then he's, mashallah, very short man. But his tawaf, he says, I don't do tawaf, Sheikh. 
People, they carry me for tawaf. <laughs> because he's really short, they carry him and then he, and then he makes tawaf. You know, they, they love it. You know, so uh, you miss the Kaaba, you miss the, Ka the you miss the praying in the Haram, you miss, you miss, you miss Mecca. You know, despite all that, you miss it because of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ He says, the dua of Ibrahim again, and bless them, bless them, bless them. من الث... So make their hearts among the people incline towards them and bless them from all goods لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ You know, brothers and sisters, Mecca is a hub. Anything you want, nothing grows in it, by the way. Nothing grows in Mecca in terms of vegetation. Nothing grows in it. It's the desert. It's rocks, mountains, rocky mountains. But subhanallah, anything you want, you find it in Mecca. Food you have never eaten in your entire life, you will see it in Mecca. Phones, technologies, cars, what? Ever you want with things where you've never seen, you will find it in Mecca. Again, one more time, the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِنْ وَمَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Oh Allah, he kept making that dua. You know what we conceal and you know what we reveal. And nothing escapes you, oh my Lord. So anyways, he made that dua, he left them. My brothers and sisters, remember what I said a couple of days ago. When uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jibreel, alayhi salam, he came and he hit the ground with his uh, wing and then sprang out Zamzam. So Hajar went there with her son Ismail and they sat by the water, drinking from the water of Zamzam. And the water of Zamzam, my brothers and sisters, is, a, is, a, is a, actually a water from Jannah. Zamzam is water from Jannah. So they sat. And what happened at that time, my brothers and sisters, in Yemen, in Yemen, there was Sid, there was a dam called Ma'rab, Sid Ma'rab, the dam of Ma'rab. You know, it got flooded and it got destroyed. So people of Yemen started, you know, travel out of that, that region, searching for a place where they could settle and camp, you know, looking for some place where there's water. So as they were traveling, my brothers and sisters, they saw birds. Remember what I saw, told you, you know, a couple of days ago about birds in the desert. They saw birds flying. They knew that birds flying in the desert, it's a sign of water. They sent some of their, you know, people to inquire and then they found Hajar السلام, with her son sitting together by this fountain, by this spring. They were people of morals, of manners, of akhlaq. And then they asked her permission if they could settle, you know, and camp near that water. And in return, they would give her an allowance. And she approved it. She would not be want to sit, you know, to stay there alone, you know, uh, deserted from her family. So she agreed that they would camp with her. You know, these people from Yemen. Brothers and sisters, it is from them that Ismail السلام, will learn the Arabic language. Because Ismail, like I said, you know, he wasn't Arabic, purely Arabi, you know. Ibrahim, he was, uh, Ibrahim is not an Arab. Remember, there was only four prophets Arab, you know, and the prophet Muhammad السلام. Remember those names I gave you? I gave you Hud, I gave you Salih, I gave you Shu'aib. And Prophet Muhammad السلام, remember, you know, these are the Arabi, Arab prophets. Hud السلام, is Arabi, uh, Salih is Arabi, Shu'aib is Arabi, and Prophet Muhammad is Arabi. So Ibrahim was not an Arab, you know, was born in Babylon at the time. So uh, Ismail, he was an Arabi. So my brothers and sisters, he learned Arabi from that Qabilat of Yemen. Not only that, brothers and sisters, he married from them. He got married from them. Yes, he got married from Arabia. Oh, this is another topic, by the way. I could talk about it for seminars, you know, for hours. Inter, you know, intercultural marriages. <laughs> intercultural marriages. 
Pakistani marrying Arabi or Arabi marrying Chinese or Chinese uh, marrying uh, African and Af inter, you know, cultural marriages. He wasn't Arabi. He married Arabiya. And he learned Arabi from them. So he grew up with them. And they lived together there. This Qabila lived there, you know, from Yemen. This Qabila by the name is called Jurhum. This Qabila is called Jurhum. Jurhum. That established, that got established in Mecca now. So they live there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Ibrahim, go back. I've got a mission for you. I've got a mission for you. All right? So Ibrahim went back. His son now, he hasn't seen him for years. He left him when he was a baby. Now his son is a somewhat like a, a little bit of a, you know a teenager, an adult somewhat, you know, like he's, he's he's older, you know, Ismail in his teens. He's so excited, you know, to see his son, you know, after such a very long time. So he wants, you know, to go and spend time with his son. He's hugging his son. He saw his wife happy, right? After they had a meal, Ibrahim, he had a vision but with this vision i'm gonna bring someone along i'm gonna bring someone along let me call let me bring someone along here let me call someone let me call uh sister fatima where is she sister fatima let me go live with sister fatima why because i know she has children i want somebody who has children so I want to go live with Sister Fatima Karim. I want somebody who I can try to give you people a beautiful example, inshallah ta'ala. Yalla, Sister Fatima, come along. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Sister Fatima, accept my request. I need you to come live with me. Or oh, Brother Ghani, whoever is there. Either you or your husband, Ghani. Yalla, somebody come on Instagram. I'm sorry, Facebook. I cannot do that with you there. You know, but uh, anybody? Okay, she's not there. She's not answering. I want to bring somebody alive who can come with me alive. Who has children? Who has children? Who has children? Come on, somebody. I need somebody live with me just for a minute. I want to do a therapy for free. <laughs> exactly. Free therapy right now. I want to really do something amazing, but I need somebody live with me here. So quickly, quickly, quickly. Who wants to come live with me? Who has children, by the way? Anybody has? You know what? Okay, nobody. Oh, fine. Uh, you don't have to have children. You don't have to have children. Uh, let me. Layla? Layla, do you want to come live with me? Because you're here. Or maybe Nawal? Or Yasin? Yasin? Let me try. Oh, Yasin, he will tell me, my baby is sleeping. My baby is sleeping. How about Nas Tabit? Okay, yalla, Nas Tabit, go. I'll go with Nas Tabit. Oh, she's unable to join. Nas Tabit, you're unable to join. I don't know why. Maybe, where is he, is Nas Tabit? Yalla, Nas. Yalla, come. I want to ask you a question. Uh, yes, I want somebody from Instagram here. Yalla, I want to ask a question. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum wa sahlan, Naz. Is that your name? Naz Tabit? Yes. Okay, mashallah. Uh, do you have any children? Yes, alhamdulillah, I do. Mashallah. How many children do you have? I have uh, a seven year old. Mashallah. Girl. girl. What's, yes. her, what's her name? Dania. Dania. Yes, alhamdulillah. Dania. You know, Qutufuha Dania. You know, right? This is Daniel comes from the Quran. Do you know have do you know that or you don't? Yes, of course. Of course, exactly. I mean, because I know in some cultures they open the Quran and they just uh that word, whatever it means. <laughs> and they say, I want to name my kid that word. Uh sister uh Naz Tabit. I'd like you for this to work, I'd like you to close your eyes. Are you there with me? I'm here. Okay, well, you have to talk to me because I cannot see you and I cannot hear you. But close your eyes, inshallah. Inshallah. I'm going to take you on a very beautiful trip. 
memory trip, right? It's a memory trip. We call it time therapy. Very something brief. I'd like you to go to a time where you were so happy, right? So I would say from zero to 10, in terms of happiness, you were a 10. You were extremely happy. So go with your mind, with your brain to that time where you were so happy, right? And I want you to feel what you felt, to see what you saw, and to heal what you heard. Play all of that in your mind. Okay. Are you there? I'm here. No, no, are you there with your mind? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm there. <laughs> okay, maybe you're even smiling, you know, closing your eyes and looking at what happened. So what are you seeing, sister? I am seeing the first time my, I saw my daughter. Yes, Ella. This works beautifully. So you, you're seeing your daughter and, and she's like making those noises and you, you're holding her that very first time you put her on your, on your chest, mashallah, and you feel, you know, she's, you feel the heartbeat. Huh? It's ni'mah. You have never, you know, felt that ni'mah before. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, yes. Describe, 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 sister, please. The sound. Describe the memories. Describe everything. Just beautifully, nicely. You know, in, a, in a less than a minute. Tell me, tell me. Tell us all here. You just have this little child that you've been longing to meet for a long time. And there she is. Close to you, finally. Alhamdulillah. Mm. A little thing that's just depending on you Mashallah. it's uh a man from allah and you're just Mashallah. really happy to have that mm. Mashallah. honor Mashallah. so stay there stay there with your mind i'd like you to imagine with me your children your child your daughter your baby now next to you she's sleeping next to you you're looking at her as you're looking at her you fall asleep you're tired you fall asleep and as you fall asleep, Sister Naz, you see a dream, you see a vision. In that vision, you get inspired. The vision comes from the heavens. You get inspired. Sacrifice your daughter. Sacrifice your daughter. And this is not a dream from Shaitan. No, it's a vision from Rahman. Sacrifice your daughter. Sister, how do you feel? Very scary. Very scary. When we do this live with people, I see tears. I see people crying. Because you're playing with your baby. She's now a little bit grown up and she's smiling at you. She's, ma, 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 ma. Uh, and then you put her to sleep and you're tired. You go to sleep and then you see a vision. In that vision, it says, slaughter your baby. You said it's very scary. Mm -hmm. Sister Naz, just a little, subhanAllah, I wouldn't even call it a bit of what Ibrahim السلام, had to feel and had to go through. He has not seen his son for a very long time and he's longing to see his son finally. And... Now that he sees him after a very long time and hugs him and spend the night with him, he goes to sleep to see a dream from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know the dreams of uh, prophets are revelations. Because prophets, they get uh, revelations either through dreams or through Jibreel alayhi salam. The dream of a prophet is a vision and that vision has a message in it. Yes. So he saw that dream, go and slaughter your son. If you were Ibrahim or if I were in the shoes of Ibrahim, how would I feel? And this is why, sister, I brought you to this time therapy with your just mind taking you to the most beautiful time ever you had. And you said it was the first time you saw your baby just so that you can connect. Because when we read the story, sisters, you know, and brothers, you know, I'm talking to you now, sister Naz. We, I'm sure you read the story in the Quran so many times. And you know about, and you know about this story very very well you know of of ibrahim seeing a dream to slaughter his son but have we ever connected with it and what it meant maybe we have never connected with 
the true feeling of a father or a mom but here a father getting a command to sacrifice his child do you see it sister uh, Nas? yes it's a huge sacrifice it's... may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your loved ones and I'm sorry I brought you here for this I only pray the best and the good inshallah ta'ala for your daughter and for inshallah your offsprings and for your loved ones inshallah ta'ala thank you so much for joining barakallah no you made it really really nice zakallah for joining thank you assalamu alaikum brothers do, 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 sisters do you do you see what happened here wa alaikum salam habibi hisham habibi hisham wa alaikum salam so brothers and sisters do you see what happened here Brothers and sisters, do you see what happened here? This Shahnaz moved me to tears, she said. So, brothers and sisters, do you see the time therapy and what happened here? How we got connected just to feel a little bit, you know, what Ibrahim had to go through. Right? So, he saw in his dream, go and sacrifice your son. Brothers and sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, after he's like over 75 years old, now he's seen his son, Rabbi Habli Mina Salihin. He made that dua Habli. He used the name of Allah, Al Wahab. Bestow on me from a Salihin, from the righteous. You're asking Allah Azza to give him righteous children. Rabbi Habli Mina Salihin. Huh? So, Subhanallah, you know, Falamma Balaga Ma'a Husai. Here's what Allah says in the Quran, so that Asafa, listen to me with your hearts. Don't listen to me. I have goosebumps. Allahu Akbar. I have goosebumps. Listen to me with your hearts and not your ears. Listen to me. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Surah As-Safat, verse 102. As-Safat 102. <laughs> When his son now, now he started walking. You know, he was a baby before when he left him, but now he's walking. Now he's in his teens. In his teens. He tells his son, Ya Bunay, in Arabic is Ibni, Ibni, my dear, my son. But, you know, another belittling world in Arabic to make it sound more beautiful, more loving. Oh my beloved son, Ya Bunay, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. I saw in my dream that I am slaughtering you. Fanzur mada tara. Oh my son, what do you think? And you know when they say like a father, like a son. You know that expression that says like a father, like a son. So this is what his son says. Ya Bunay. Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. Oh my son, I saw in the dream that I'm slaughtering you. What do you think? What do you think? And his son knows because he knows that the dream of prophets is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the son says, Allah. Allah, such a father, such a son. Ya Bunay, Ya Abati. One more time. Allahu Akbar. Remember who used to say Ya Abati? Brothers and sisters, remember who used to say Abati? Who said Abati the first time here? Remember? I said this and I said remember and don't forget because I'm going to bring it back. Who said Abati initially? Do you remember? Do you remember who said Abati to whom? Who said it to whom? Ibrahim Yasin. Ibrahim said it to his father. Ya Abati, oh my beloved father, oh my beloved father, Ya Abati. Now Ismail he's saying the same to his father. Ya Abati, fal ma tu'mar. Satajiduni insha Allah min al sabirin. Oh my beloved father. He did not say, slaughter me. Look, the Quran is so powerful. He did not say, oh my father, sl slaughter me. He says, oh my father, do as you were told. Allahu Akbar. Full, total submission. 
full, total, complete submission. Oh, my father, do as you were told. Yani, he didn't say just slaughter me. You were told to slaughter me, slaughter me. If you were told something else, do that something else. Whatever Allah told you, that what you should be doing. Oh, my father, do as you were told. Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين. You shall find me from those who are patient. My brothers and sisters, it's been narrated in the ahadith that when uh, Ismail, you know, uh, when Ibrahim took his son to slaughter him, and uh, and uh, Ismail told his dad, "Oh my father, when you slaughter me, don't slaughter me like this. You know, heads up." Put me heads down. Why? Because I don't want you to look at my face and have any doubt. When you slaughter me, I don't want you to look at my face and my eyes. I want you to put my face down so that you don't look at my eyes and take the knife and slaughter me as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to. Allahu Akbar. The full submission. They خلاص, They submitted fully to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفَذَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينُ وَفَذَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says that. Surah Al-Safat still, verse number 105. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينُ Indeed, this is the real bala, the real ibtila, the real the, the real hardship, the real test and trial, mubin. Yeah, and there is no bala more than this. As I told you, throwing inside the fire is even less of a of a pun is less, uh, less of a trial than being, you know, than seeing a dream to go and slaughter your son, kill your son. Yeah, and I'd rather you throw me into the fire than tell me go and kill your son. The ultimate test, exactly. Yeah, and this is the bala'ul mubin. And then because he passed the test, sisters and brothers, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ And we ransom him a great sacrifice. Ibrahim took the knife. He took the knife. But as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before addressed and spoke to the fire not to burn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one more time spoke and addressed, you know, to the knife not to kill. Right there, be and it is because this Allah Azza wa Jal before He spoke to the fire, not burn Ibrahim. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one more time, He spoke to the knife, oh knife, don't slaughter. In fact, Ibrahim He took the knife and He moved the knife, but the knife wasn't to kill, the knife wasn't to slaughter. Why? Because the knife is a creation of Allah, the knife is a creation of Allah. That's it. The knife was ordered by Allah, don't kill. And the knife did not kill. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he passed all the tests, he ransomed him with a great sacrifice. So this is the sacrifice that we commemorate every year in, in the, in the uh, uh, Eid al-Adha. Right, the Eid al-Adha, when we go and slaughter that that sheep, you know, or we slaughter the lamb, or slaughter whatever you want to slaughter, right? You know that animal to commemorate the same incident that happened between Ibrahim and Ismail. Allah. You see, my brothers and sisters, the key message here. The key message, and write it down. Are you ready? This is the gold. This is gold. Al-Adha comes from Udhiyah. Al-Adha comes from Udhiyah. And Udhiyah is the sacrifice. You know, they say Udhiyah. What's Udhiyah? Yudahi, you know, is to sacrifice. This is what Udhiyah means. So brothers and sisters, get ready for this beauty. Get ready for the beauty. Here's the beauty. This is, I'm going to summarize this, this whole story in one sentence. Are you ready for it? Lula Rob, Shahnaz. Watercolor, Najwa, Umair, Layla, Yasmin. Are you guys ready for my summary right here? Are you guys ready for the summary? The summary of the entire story in one, one, one verse, one sentence right here. Are you guys ready? Bismillah. Exactly. Write it down. Write it down. 
Note it down. I don't want you to forget this. Al-Bushra ta'ti ba'da tadhiyah. I had to say it in Arabic first. I had to say, Sister Fatima, you missed out so much. It's unbelievable what you missed out. Sister Fatima, you missed out so much. It's unbelievable what you have missed out. And I pray and I hope that you will go back and watch this session. I really pray that you go back and watch it. Sisters and brothers, Al-Bushra ta'ti ba'da at-tadhiyah. Do you get it? This is my summary. This is my summary right here. Al-Bushra, the glad tiding, it comes right after At-Tadhiyah, after sacrifice, after perseverance, after patience. You want glad tiding, you want good news, you want celebration. It all comes right after At-Tadhiyah, after sacrifice. Naam. Naam. This is it. This is the summary of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So much, so much, so much, so much. So let me ask you this before I go, brothers and sisters. Let me ask you this. What is the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now will, will gift Ibrahim with? After passing all the exams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gift Ibrahim with a beautiful gift. What is that gift? Now is the gift. Now is party time. Now is celebration time after the after the udhiya, right? Now there is a party time, now there is celebration time, now there is payback time in the dunya. In the dunya, Allah Azza wa will give Ibrahim a beautiful gift. What is that gift? What is that gift? Tell me Sa'diya, tell me Muna Moon, tell me Shahnaz, tell me Layla, tell me Fatima, tell me, tell me, tell me watercolor. What is the gift? Yaseen. Yasin, what's the gift now? Building the Kaaba. Yasmin. MashaAllah alayki Yasmin. Glad tidings comes after sacrifice. Yes. Building the Kaaba. We already did Eid. Khalas. Building the Kaaba. He built. Oh, khalas. Khalas. That's it. Finish. Finish. Ibrahim, he didn't know. He didn't know what's to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inspire Ibrahim alayhi salam. Reveal to Ibrahim. Ya Ibrahim. Ya Ibrahim. Here is the thing. Now we have a project with you and your son together. Build the Kaaba. Build the Kaaba. Getting stones. His son and the father working together. You know, the son bringing stones, rocks. And then the father puts together, you know, based on the foundation built by the angels. By the angels. And you know the foundation of the Kaaba was still there, so he was building the Kaaba with his son, handing him the 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 rocks, and then he needed a special rock. He needed a special rock to actually put for people to start their tawaf, their circumambulation. He needed a special rock, so the he said, "Let me go and look for the rock." Right, and then Ismail went around looking for a rock. He came and he found a rock already there. Uh, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this rock all the way from the heavens. It's called Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. Al-Hajar, the black stone that came from heaven. And then he put it in that corner so that people will start their tawaf from that corner right there. From the corner right there. And Ibrahim, he did not know, he did not know that years later, that years, 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 years later, hundred years later, thousand years later, people will come from all over the world, from the four corners of the world, saying, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن 
الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك Next week, next week, I was supposed to take my flight for Hajj. I was supposed to take my flight for Hajj next week. But لبيك, I'm saying لبيك from here. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Allah, he didn't know. He didn't know. He just built the Kaaba. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا And call people to come for hajj. Oh Allah, how? How can I call my voice? Yeah, I'm here in the middle of nowhere. How can I make a call for people to hear my voice? So he did as he was told. He called, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ Oh you people, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ Allah Azza wa has called you to come for to do Hajj. Fahujju, come and do Hajj. Come and perform Hajj. Ayyuhannas, oh you people, Allah has ordered you to come and perform Hajj. Come and perform Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his voice reach the corners. People heard his voice, started coming, saying, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك الله This was the story of Ibrahim عليه السلام and Ismail and Hajar and Sarah and Ishaq what an amazing story, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hajar got, uh, Ismail got married. I told you Ismail got married from the Qabilat of, uh, uh, the Qabilat of Yemen. The Qabilat of Yemen, if you remember when they came and they camped, he got married. Qabilat Jurhum. But what happened when he got married? His father Ibrahim, one day he came to visit him. One, his father, one day he came to visit him. He wasn't there, he wasn't home. But his wife was home. What happened? After a very long time, almost 100 years old now, Ibrahim, old man, came to visit his son, Ismail. He didn't find him home, but he found his wife. He asked her a few questions, and his wife replied, Do you want to know, sisters and brothers, what happened between Ibrahim and Ismail's wife? Do you want to know? Do you want to know, sisters? What a caller, Yashmin, Fatima, Umail, Saadiya, Shahnaz, all of you. Do you want to know what happened? Huh? No, 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 Yeah. I would tell you, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow, of course. Of course, I would tell you tomorrow. I've already exceeded my time limit. My time limit was supposed to be for 40 minutes, but we could not cut off the story in the middle. I had to carry on to finish the story of Ibrahim. But tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll tell you the story of Ibrahim and Ismail's wife. And then we can move to Ishaq as well. Ishaq and, 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 and what happened to Ishaq and Yaqub after that. And then we will move to other prophets, inshallah ta'ala. So tomorrow, bi'idhnillah, one more time, we will be idnillah, you know, insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, meet you. Uh, I cannot wait, be idnillah, to spend time with my beloved sisters and brothers. Barakallahu fikum. Barakallahu fikum. Barakallahu fikum. La, lahna khalas, we changed the timings. We said, we, we know, between half an hour to 40 minutes. Mm. <laughs> The star, it takes an hour, no more hour. It's only 
40 minutes insha'Allah ta'ala but I had to finish it off right I had to finish that story so izakum Allah khair barakallahu fikum thank you sisters and brothers those of you from the uh, from Facebook and those of you from Instagram thank you for joining barakallahu fikum assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you Saadia Khan and Hanifa and Shahnaz those sisters and brothers from Facebook those of you in here on Instagram uh, what a caller <laughs> Najwa and Yasin and Fatima and Zoya, all of you. Jazakum Allah khair. Lula Rob, Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you so much for being here. Assalamu alaikum, inshallah ta'ala. Allah will, inshallah, yes, Hajj or Umrah have been suspended, but inshallah ta'ala, you will get the ajr of your intention bi idnillah. Inshallah, Hajj will be coming back, don't worry. And Umrah will be coming back, inshallah ta'ala, don't worry. May Allah bless you. Khadija, thank you. Elizabeth Shingler, thank you for joining. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi ta'ala, wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.